2-4, multiplying integers. There are two steps for multiplying integers. The first, multiply the two numbers together as you've done since you were wee little kitties. You're simply going to multiply the magnitudes, separating integers into their two attributes, direction and magnitude. Step one takes care of the magnitude. Multiply the magnitudes together. Step two, give the answer the correct sign, either positive or negative. We're going to assign that attribute afterwards. The rules for multiplying integers are vastly different than those for adding and subtracting integers. We had some generalizations for adding integers. I need you to forget those. These are going to move on to something else. Here we have a positive number times a positive number. That's always going to give us a positive answer. That hasn't changed. A negative times a negative. Not necessarily what you think. This is also going to give you a positive answer. However, a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive is going to give you a negative answer. In other words, if the signs are the same, positive, positive, negative, negative, you're going to get a positive answer. If the signs are different, you get a negative answer. It's a generalization for multiplying integers together. Positive times positive is positive. Negative times negative is positive. And positive times negative is negative. This is the most important thing you'll have to remember or get from this lesson, is how to assign number two, give the answer the correct sign. Multiplying is no different than it has been. We'll try some examples. First, we'll have negative five times eight. Multiply the numbers like together like you normally would. Five times eight is 40. Now we decide if it's positive or negative. The signs are different. One number is negative, one number is positive. That means the answer is going to be negative. Next example, negative 9 times negative 7. We multiply like we would normally. 9 times 7 is 63. Now we need to decide if the answer is positive or negative. We have a negative times a negative. The signs were the same, so the answer is going to be positive 63. The next example, negative 2 times 3 times negative 5. This is a multi-step problem, so we will break it down and take care of each step individually. First, we'll do negative 2 times positive 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Now we need to decide if it's a positive 6 or a negative 6. We multiplied a negative 2 times a positive 3. The signs were different, negative times positive. So that's going to give us a negative 6. We didn't do anything with the negative 5, so we will simply bring that down and continue our problem, just like an order of operations problem. You're going to see these with positive and negatives now. So now we have negative 6 times negative 5. 6 times 5 is 30. Now we need to decide if the answer is positive or negative. They're both negative numbers, so a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive. So it's positive 30. Moving over to the right-hand column, we have negative 2 times 3x. x, a variable. Letters are going to begin to show up. And for the purposes of today's lesson, those variables are like luggage. The x is 3's suitcase. It's going to go wherever the 3 goes. You're not going to do anything to it. You're not going to empty it. You're not going to open it. It's just going to travel along with it. So you're going to kind of ignore it and then put it into the answer. So we're going to look at and focus on negative 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then we decide if it's a positive 6 or a negative 6. It's a negative times a positive, so it's going to be negative. And then we have that x. Like I said earlier, it's like luggage. It just sort of comes down into the answer. So negative 2 times 3x is a negative 6x. Next example, 4a times negative 3b. We do the numbers first. 4 times 3 is going to give us 12. Decide if it's positive or negative. We have a positive 4 and a negative 3. The signs were different, so the answer is going to be negative. And then the variables, like luggage, kind of hang out there. So we're just not going to put the a and the b on the end. Because we combine the numbers, we combine the variables as well. All right, last example, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Another order of operations problem, so we will take care of the first two, negative 1 times negative 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 
and then we have a negative times a negative, which means the answer is going to be positive. Bring down the other times a negative 1 because we didn't use it, and it needs to be in the same order. So now we have 1 times 1. It's going to give us 1. Now we have a positive 1 times a negative 1. Negative times positive, the signs are different, so it's going to be a negative 1. That takes care of that. Your homework today is going to be a little bit longer than normal. The first part of your homework is math problems. Book page 78, problems 16 to 52, the evens. Now for the part that you might not like so much. You're going to do some writing for me, as it says on the board. I need you to explain to me in two to three sentences per topic. So you're going to have two to three sentences for each one of the things here. I need to know how to add integers if the signs are positive. I need to know how to add integers if the signs are negative. I want to know how to add integers if the signs are different. And then I want to know how to subtract integers. 